Hey everybody, Mr. Macintosh here. In this video, I'm gonna explain what happened with the recent problems with the macOS updates that were released two weeks ago. They were reported to cause problems on a certain small amount of machines that were bricking them and making them not even turn on anymore. I actually reported on this issue five days ago and provided a solution for the issue and Apple just released a statement today acknowledging the issue. I'm gonna go over what happened, how to fix the issue, and what Apple said about what they're gonna do about the problem and more. Let's get started. The first thing I wanted to do is cover and talk about which machines were affected by this issue and which macOS updates were causing the issue. It's been reported in the Mac news, for example, Mac Rumors, 9to5Mac, and Apple Insider, that all kinds of different machines were being affected. But with this issue, it's only a certain amount of Macs that, that could have had the issue happen to them. Basically, they're T2 security chip Macs. And in my article on how to restore BridgeOS, I go over and show all the Macs that are equipped with a T2 security chip. That's the 2019 to 2016 inch, 2018 to 2019, 13 to 15 inch, 2018 to 2020 MacBook Air, 18 Mac Mini, 20 iMac, 17 iMac Pro, and 2019 Mac Pro. If you had one of these devices, you had a small chance of your machine being bricked by the updates. So now which updates caused this issue? The updates that were had the problematic BridgeOS update were the Catalina 2021-007, the macOS Big Sur 11.6.1, and the macOS Monterey 12.0.1 public release. Now you might think, well, wait a minute, how does that one have it? Well, the, the problem is, is that if you were on a previous version of Mac OS Monterey beta and you had a T2 Mac and you updated to this version, you were affected. Now, when I say bridge OS update, what the heck am I talking about here? The bridge OS update customer update. So when you run software update in system preferences, it's going to immediately check for updates. And for example, this Monterey Mac is connected to the developer seed. So it sees the 12.1 beta. Now, if I install install this here it is going to install the update but since i have a t2 security chip map it is also going to have to update the operating system that runs on that t2 security chip so what does that look like now how do you find the bridge os version all you need to do is go up to apple click about this mac and then click on the system information button and then the hardware overview will come up so it'll tell you which model of mac you're running but the important information is the system firmware version right here and this is the bridge os version 1916 10548 that's the problematic bridge os update that was being deployed to these macs now keep in mind this bridge os update is not included as i showed you it's a separate update when the software update kicks in checks on the local machine it says does this meet the requirements is a bridge os update needed if it says yes it reaches out to the software update server and grabs this bridge os update and it will update it the first thing before it installs the mac os and that's where the problem is happening so now let's talk about how the update failed once you kick off the software update in system preferences, like I said before, the first thing it's gonna do is download the actual software update right here, the macOS Monterey software update for the point release. Once that's done, a secondary mechanism is gonna come in and check, hey, I need a bridge OS update. Then it's gonna to start to download this here, this 468 megabyte bridge OS update for the T2 security chip. It'll download that and stage it for, for install. Then what will happen is the Mac will automatically restart then it tells you there's a progress bar and it says this Mac will turn off for up to two to three minutes and doesn't tell you it's installing the bridge OS update, but it just tells you it's gonna install an update. The system will shut down the Intel side, the entire Intel logic board part will shut down. The T2 will turn on and update its bridge OS update. And when that's finished, it powers on the Intel side and then continues on to install the Mac OS update part. But this is the part where it's failing. When it attempts to install the bridge OS update, something in that process is failing. And there is supposed to be a fail safe mechanism where if the bridge OS update fails, it will fall back and then use just the standard one that was on there and not upgrade. But that either that or the update itself is failing. And what happens then, Intel side is powered down, the screen is totally black, the machine is running, you might be able to hear a slight fan, but it looks like it's doing nothing. 
And when the user's looking at it, they think, well, what the heck's going on with this machine? It's been stuck on this screen for five to 10 to 15 minutes. If it's already been that long, it's definitely failed because it only should take two to four minutes max to perform that bridge OS update. So then the user's thinking, well, what's going on? And they might power it down, power it back up. By that time, it's too late. This machine is never gonna be able to boot again without the assistance of support or another Mac. So what do I mean by that? Let's talk about now that if you're in that state and you install one of those updates and you're in that state and you have a friend or maybe your Mac is in that update, I'm gonna show you how to fix it now. Because again, Apple only says contact support. Now, when, when you do that, you don't know who you're gonna be getting and they might just tell you, you're gonna have to bring it into a service center to get it fixed. But what if you're out of warranty? Are you gonna have to pay for the service? So that's gonna be a critical thing, right? And also, do, can you try Trust them to be able to fix this correctly where they retain your data. Wonder if you have important data on that Mac and you need that data. You are in big trouble if you don't know the proper steps or the technician that you're working with doesn't know the proper steps to rescue this Mac. So let's talk about what that is next. The first thing we need to do is use an application called Apple Configurator 2. This application on the Mac is used to restore iPads, iPhones, and now since 2017, T2 Bridge OS updates, it can restore and reinstall. And now for M1 Macs, it can be used to reinstall the entire operating system from an IPSW file. What's interesting is, is that you can actually use this application to restore the Bridge OS software that's running on that T2 security chip on these Intel Macs. So if you see here, I've already got one plugged in so we can walk through a situation. We can use the example that this Mac has failed. So I'm gonna show you first on how to get the Mac into the DFU mode so you can see the Mac plugged in and you need a second Mac to do this because that's the Mac that's gonna be the host Mac. The target Mac is gonna be the Mac that is having the problems. So you can see that this is a 2018 Mac Mini that I booted into DFU mode. So let me show you how to get a Mac Back into DFU mode first. And I'll put a link to my article down here in the description so you can read because this is kind of a complicated process to do this, okay? If you look at this MacBook Pro here, you'll notice that the first USB-C port has to be used to be able to do the BridgeOS restore. And if you're used to doing M1 Macs, that's actually the one closest to the back of the screen, this one right here. So you might be confused if you're working with someone and they're like, hey, I can't get the thing into DFU mode. Make sure it's the one closest to the trackpad or the closest to the front. And the cable that you're gonna need to use is the white USB-C charge cable. You can use that and plug it into this port and you can plug it into any port on the host Mac, which is going to be doing the Apple Configurator 2 restore part. And if you don't have a newer Mac with USB-C, that's okay. If you have a USB-C to USB-A cable, that will work just fine too. So now once you do that, there here's instructions on how to get it into the DFU mode. You have to hold down these keys here. You have to basically press power for one second, then press right shift, left option, and then left command for eight seconds. And once that's done, you'll see it show up in DFU mode in Apple Configurator 2. If that's still difficult, I have two videos that you can watch right here, a deep dive and a real quick video on how to boot the machine into DFU mode and how to restore and revive with Apple Configurator 2. Once we have it in Apple Configurator 2 and it's reading in DFU mode, now we have two very important options that we have to talk about. When you right click in here, you're gonna have a restore option and you might think that's the one I wanna click, right? That's not not the one you want to click in this situation. You want to go to advanced and then revive device. What is the difference? Revive device will only download the latest version of Bridge OS and reinstall it. That's it. That is step one. And you have to try that first. If that works, all your data is retained. The update finishes and then you can power back on your Mac and everything is fixed. The operating system's fixed, the data is all there, and you're good to go. The restore option is in case 
the revive option, no matter what you do, does not work. In certain cases, this is going to be required. And what it does is it does download the latest version of RegOS and installs it, but it also erases the entire SSD. Sometimes things are so corrupted and messed up that this is the only way to revive the Mac. So that's what the important difference is. I made it clear in this tweet here that if you're working with anybody or you're doing it yourself, that you have to do the revive because the revive will re maintain your data. And if the person does restore, it'll wipe everything. So I want that's why I wanted to make sure that that was super crystal clear before you continued here. Okay, now that we know we want to do a revive, all we need to do is right click into the middle or control click if you don't have right click enabled, go down to advanced and click on revive device. And then it'll immediately kick on with reviving device. It's going to download the 450 megabyte bridge OS update file to a temporary location and then it's going to immediately attempt to install it onto the system. And we'll give it a second here to finish the download. The step three is unzipping and then installing the system is step four. Now it's installing the bridge OS update on the T2 security chip right now. Okay, just finished. When you see the lock screen here, the Mac will automatically power back on. You shouldn't have to do anything. For example, if you got a Mac mini like I'm showing here, the power light will come back on and then the screen should light up and start booting the system. And there it goes. You just heard the chime and then the Apple logo is back up and it's booting now to Mac OS. Now let's talk about some questions. There's a lot of questions going on around this whole situation, whether it's going to affect me, is it fixed, what's going on? Well, what happened was is that today Apple did release a statement and it was kind of weird. They didn't release it on the news releases or anywhere else from their official Twitter or anywhere else. They basically just released a statement to Renee Ritchie that basically said this, we have identified and fixed an issue with the firmware on the Apple T2 security chip that prevented a very small small number of users from booting up their Mac after updating Mac OS. The updated firmware is now included with the existing Mac OS updates. Any users impacted by this issue can contact Apple support for assistance. And again, this goes back to when I put out this tweet here talking about the issue uh, five days ago and explaining that we've seen this. We started seeing issues days after in the Mac admin community that there were machines that were getting bricked. In, in offices, at work from home situations, all over the place. And we immediately started reporting this to Apple. And I worked with a couple of people who had the issue and came up with the solution to be able to revive the Bridge OS. It's not like Bridge OS update breaking is happening all the time. It just sometimes Bridge OS updates do fail and this is the way to revive them. And then it's nice that Apple did include a way to fix when there's problems happening. There's a couple questions in the Mac rumors thread. I have a a Mac Mini that's a T2 security chip that is fine. Do I need to do anything? And you want to know what? For most users, this is a proper question. When an article comes out like this and you're thinking to yourself, what the heck is this? Is this going to affect me? Should I not install updates for, for a while now? No. The good news is, it's like Apple made in the statement, the Bridge OS update that I originally talked about here has been updated. And you can see, look at these previous ones. They've been deprecated and pulled from the software update catalog. So the only one that is available right now for the Max to go grab is the one that's fixed and will not have the problem. So how do you know that you could be affected by this? And I'll show you. In this screenshot here, this is a picture of a hardware overview when you go about this Mac, like we talked about earlier, of a fixed Mac. The 10,548 is the problematic Bridge OS update. If you're on there, you're fine, you made it. You were lucky because you weren't one of the ones that had the problem. Now, if you're on 549, that means that you installed the update after November 5th, and you're fine too because this is the fixed version. So you're no problem. Now, if you're in any version before 10,548 or 549, then you need to install the latest Catalina, Big Sur, and Monterey update to get to this latest version, but you'll be fine because again, they deprecated the old one and the only one that's available now is this 549, which is all fixed. And you don't have to worry about anything anymore. So you're good to go. 
So let's wrap this video up with some conclusions here. First thing I noticed real quick was is that when I put this tweet out, this is I was the only one that was basically saying exactly what happened. It was me and Renee that were the only... First of all, Renee got a, a statement directly from Apple. I pull, put this statement out here because I check the software update catalogs at 12 noon every day to make sure that Apple doesn't release something. And they did today. And that's what they released. They released that Bridge OS update. And that's why I let everybody know that that happened. And there was no associated Mac OS update to come with it. And that's what was a little bit strange about this situation. And sometimes they'll like release 11.6.2 and then have a fixed version of Bridge OS along with it. And that's why this is a little bit different. And that's why Apple had to release a statement because they did not release an OS update that they could just put in the patch notes that they fixed this. So again, it's a little bit strange that they only reached out to one person. At least the information got out there because then all the other uh, Apple news sites picked up on Renee's tweet. Um, but again, it's a little strange that they didn't release anything on their official channels. And it's this goes back to Mac OS updates and Windows updates, Linux updates, any kind of OS update can have problems. And the idea here is that you want to prevent yourself from having one of these problems in the future. So I've got some real quick recommendations for you. The first off is, is that imagine being in this situation and you don't have any access to your data. And then you took it to an Apple store and they wiped it clean and all your data is gone. So step one, get Time Machine going. Go into System Preferences and then activate Time Machine. And as you can see here, I have one, but guess what? Look at this. I haven't updated since March 15th. So this is a good opportunity for me to do it too. The bottom line is, is that everybody's busy day to day, right? So use Time Machine to be able to do that or use iCloud. Go into iCloud, connect iCloud Drive, Back up your data there. It's always in the cloud. So if something happens to your Mac, you'll be safe because you have a backup. That's step one. Step two is that when a Mac OS update comes out, wait a week. Give it some time. Everybody usually rushes to install it. And there's nothing wrong with installing an update the first day. If you wait a couple days just to make sure. And, and if there's something happens, I'm going to put it on my Twitter and I'll let you know. So let's say uh, Apple releases 11.6.2 and there's a problem. You, I'll, you, you can bet I'm going to let you know about it. And then you can say, oh, hey, I'm going to hold off for a little bit before. I'm not saying that you always have to check my site before you update. But the idea is that if you have a machine that you count on for your work every day, that's mission critical. Give it a little time. Make sure that you, no issues are reported before you install a software update. And that's it for recommendations. And that's it for this. This is a long video that just kind of talked about the, the issue at hand. It talked about how to fix the issue if you had it. And it talked about kind of Mac OS updates in a whole and some recommendations. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give this video a thumbs up or share it. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, click on that subscribe button. And if you're a viewer or a subscriber, you know I truly appreciate it. And we'll catch you in the next video.